Here we have derivative problem on velocity. Okay, let's go to the information. A missile fired from ground level rises x meters vertically upwards in t seconds and x equals to 100 times t negative 25 over 2 times t square. So we have multiple questions. The first question, uh, find the initial velocity of the missile. The second question, find the time when the height of the missile is a maximum. Uh, third question, find the maximum height reached. The last question, I mean the fourth question, find the velocity with which the missile strikes the ground. Okay, so if I want to answer the first question, that is, uh, if I want to find the initial velocity of the missile, first I have to find the velocity function. Okay, here we have a position function that is uh, given by uh, x equals to 100 times t negative 25 over 2 times t square. Okay, if I want to get velocity function b, what I need to do is I have to find the derivative of the position function x with respect to time that is uh, dt. Okay, here in this uh, dx over dt, we can plug in the stuff which is equal to x. So from the given question, uh, this is the expression which is equal to x. So we can plug in this expression for x over here. Then I'm getting d of uh, 100 t negative uh, 25 over 2 times uh, t square over dd. Okay, now I have to find the derivative of this expression with respect to t. So v equals to, so here uh, 100, the constant 100 is multiplied by the variable. So when I find derivative, uh, if a constant is multiplied by the variable, I have to keep the constant as it is, and I have to find the derivative of the variable part alone. So when I find the derivative uh, of this t with respect to t, it will be one. Okay, negative. Again, a constant 25 over two is multiplied by the variable part. So I keep the constant 25 over two as it is, and now I have to find the derivative of this variable part. Okay, so to get the derivative of this t square, I'm going to use a power rule of derivative. What is power rule of derivative? I just have to bring this exponent 2 in front of the variable and subtract 1 from the exponent. Then I'm getting 2 times t to the power of 2 negative 1. So I just got this exponent in front of the variable t and subtracted 1 from the exponent. So when I subtract 1 from 2, it will become just 1. So whenever the exponent of a variable is 1, we don't have to mention, so we can leave it. Okay, now this 2, 2 will cancel out. I'm getting uh, v equals to 100 times 1 is 100, negative 25 times c is 25 t. Okay, now I got the velocity function that is v equals to 100, negative 25 times t. Okay, now let's answer the first question. Uh, that is, we have to find the initial velocity of the missile. Okay, to get the initial velocity of the missile, what I need to do is, I have to plug in t equals to zero into the velocity function. Because t equals to zero is the initial time. To get the initial velocity, we have to plug in the initial time into the velocity function, that is uh, t equals to zero. Okay, let me do it. So that is uh, v equals to 100 negative 25 times, uh, for this t, we have to plug in zero. So when I do so, I'm getting v equals to 100 negative zero, so it becomes 100 negative zero becomes just 100. Okay, so here, what is the unit of this velocity? Actually, when I uh, want to find velocity, uh, what I did is I just uh, found the derivative of the position function x with respect to time. So here we have x in numerator, t in denominator. What is the unit of x? So the unit of x is meters and the unit of uh, time t is seconds. So we have to write uh, meter in numerator and since we have t in denominator, we have to write seconds and denominator. So uh, the unit of the velocity is meter per second. So we have to write the unit over here, meter per second. So the initial velocity is 100 meter per second. Okay, now we have finished answering the first question. Okay, now let's uh, answer the second question. That is, we have to find the time when the height of the missile is maximum. Okay, so when the, when the missile reaches the maximum height, at that moment, uh, the velocity of the missile will become zero. So not only the missile, any object. Uh, so if it travels vertically upward, so when it reaches its maximum height, at that particular point, the velocity of the particle will become zero. So uh, now uh, the, when, the, when the missile reaches its maximum height, so the velocity will be zero. Already we got uh, the stuff which is equivalent to velocity that is 100 negative 25 t. So if I plug in that one for v, I'm getting 100 negative 25 t equals to zero. Okay, now I subtract 100 from both sides. When I do so, I'm getting uh, this positive 100, negative 100 will cancel out. I'm getting negative 25 t is equal to negative 100. Okay, let me write the same equation over here. Negative 25 t equals to negative 100. Okay, to solve for t, I divide both sides by negative 25. When I do so, this negative 25, negative 25 will cancel out. Negative, negative will cancel out. 25 goes into 25 one times. 25 goes into 100 four times. I'm getting uh, t equals to four. That is uh, four 
seconds uh, because already we know, we know that uh, the unit of t is seconds. That is actually we got this time t equals to four second by equating the velocity to zero. So when will the velocity be zero? When the missile reaches its maximum height. So when uh, the time taken for the missile to reach its maximum height is four seconds. Now we have answered the second question. Okay, now let's uh, do the third question. So what is the third question? We have to find the maximum height reach. Okay, so let's answer the third question over here. Okay, already we know that uh, the time taken by the missile to reach its maximum height, maximum height uh, in uh, question two, that is four seconds. So to know the maximum height reached by the missile, what I need is I have to plug in this uh, four for t into the position function. So when I plug in t is equal to four into the position function, I'll be getting some value for x. So that is the maximum height reached by the missile. Okay, let me plug in x equals to four into the position function. That is x equals to 100 times four, uh, negative 25 over two times uh, four square. Okay, so I'm getting x equals to 100 times four will become 400, negative 25 over two, and four square becomes 16, two goes into two, one times two goes into 16, eight times. Then I'm getting x equals to 400, negative 25 times the eight will become uh, 200. So finally, I'm getting x equals to 200. And we know that x, uh, the unit of x is meters, that is uh, 200 meters. So the maximum height reached by the missile uh, is 200 meters. So now we have answered uh, question three. Now uh, let's do fourth question. So that is, uh, we have to find the velocity when the missile strikes the ground. Okay, just now we discussed uh, like, uh, let's take, uh, this is the ground level. So this is a point uh, from where the missile is launched and the mes missile uh, reached its maximum height over here and then it comes back to the ground. Okay, so uh, how long does the missile take to uh, travel uh, uh, to reach the maximum height? That is uh, four seconds. That's the answer we have in question number two. So the missile takes four seconds to reach its maximum height from the ground to maximum height. So how long does, uh, does, the, missile will, um, does the missile take uh, to travel from the maximum height to the ground? The same four seconds. So since the missile is launched from over here, so it takes eight seconds uh, to strike the ground over here. Okay, so to find the velocity when the missile strikes the ground, what I need to do is I have to plug in t equals to eight into the velocity function. Because we know that, so the missile takes eight seconds uh, to travel from the starting position to uh, the position where it strikes the ground. So let's plug in uh, t equals to eight into the velocity function to find the velocity when the missile strikes the ground. So v equals to 100 negative 25 times uh, eight. So v equals to 100 negative 25 times eight uh, is uh, 200. So when I subtract uh, 200 from 100, I'm getting negative 100. Already we know the unit of velocity that is a meter per second. So here we can write the same unit meter per second. So when the missile strikes the ground, the velocity of the missile is negative 100 meter per second.